Good evening and welcome to the Human Relations Commission for Wednesday, September 11th, 2024. We will turn the meeting over to our executive director, Ms. Savitra Peoples-Brown. I'm sorry, we'll turn it over to Ashley Elliott for the roll call for the commissioners who are present. And then we'll turn it over to our executive director. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Bryan. Commissioner Greer. Commissioner Blavitt. Commissioner Jamil. Present. Commissioner Lewis. Present. Commissioner Marshall. And our newest commissioner, Commissioner Thornton. Present. Thank you. Thank you. And so at this time, we'll turn uh, the meeting over to our executive director to open it to um, our commissioners for good and welfare. We'll do a, a um, commissioner's check in via your districts, and then she'll give out her district, I mean, her director's report. All right, thank you, um, Administrator um, Ramona. Uh, so good evening, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to welcome and kick off our fall um, session, really our, our, our year. Um, we went over break over the summer, and so we um, are technically and truly kicking off our year um, together. So um, I want to officially welcome everyone, um, especially our newest commissioner, um, which we'll talk more about in just a moment. Um, I do want to just give um, uh, two disclaimers before we turn it over uh, to the commissioners for report out. Um, Chairman Blavitt, unfortunately, um, had an emergency and um, was unable to join us tonight. So we're sending him good well wishes and prayer. Uh, and um, today is the 23rd anniversary of September 11th. So before we go any further, we do just want to have a um, 30 second moment of silence. Thank you, commissioners and staff for joining us um, for that reflective moment of silence. Um, next, I will turn it over. Well, before we do that, um, again, I just want to welcome our newest commissioner, um, Ms. Chrissy Thornton. Um, sorry to put you on the spot, but not really. Uh, I think it would be uh, great if we uh, kicked it off to hear from you first. Um, we know your resume, we know your background, we know why you're here, um, but it'll be great to have you formally introduce yourself to the fellow commissioners. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. I am a, a long-term Baltimore County resident. I'm also the president and CEO of Associated Black Charities. We're specifically a racial equity organization seeking to uh, promote anti-racism and to undo the, the ways that structural racism has impacted the lives of black people and other marginalized communities. I actually um, came to know about the commission through my uh, participation in the most recent graduating class of uh, Baltimore County leadership. And so I uh, came through that program and heard about the commission um, through the county executive and was happy to be connected to Savitra and her team and look forward to contributing the best I can to the work that you all are doing. Thank you, Commissioner Thornton. I'm officially uh, <laughs> uh, giving you that, that title, um, being this is your first official meeting with us. Um, you are such, uh, you have such high energy 
and just given the experience and just the um, envision of the Human Relations Commission in Baltimore County, um, we did um, find just through the proper interviewing process that you were um, best suited as a high, highly qualified candidate. So we thank you for your interest and we look forward to working closely with you over your next term. Uh, and should, we should also mention that uh, Commissioner Thornton is serving in one of our at-large roles, at-large seat roles. All right, um, just wanted to, I know we don't have a uh, full presence tonight. Um, we do have some documents that we'll go over, but because we don't have a quorum, we won't be voting, um, which won't be a problem. I'll go into more later detail, uh, later details throughout the presentation, but just wanted to also offer that disclaimer as we go around um, with the round robin report outs. Uh, so um, I will turn it next over to Danielle since your camera's on. Um, for a uh, report out, any updates, um, anything that uh, stands out for you to share with the commission tonight. Sure. Um, thank you for that. And good evening, everyone. Uh, no major report outs for this exact moment in time, uh, but earlier, I guess it was at the beginning of the summer, um, I attended the uh, Baltimore Commission on Civil Rights. They did a hate bias forum. And what was really interesting about that is they were able to dive into quite a bit of research um, and open up the forum in a way that invited the community. And so we were able to hear from law enforcement, um, some people that were researchers, community folks, educators, et cetera, around why hate bias is not necessarily being reported at the rates that it should. And I can see direct correlations to the work that we're we're trying to do right now. And so one of the things that I'm sort of walking away from that experience with is even if as I question why I may or may not want to report something in the moment is do people really fully understand the channels um, of which these um, reports need to be made? Do they understand the significance um, and what happens after the report is made? And is there some type of support system that's provided for them um, so that they don't necessarily feel alone? Right? Like if we report something and you feel like there's backlash against you as the individual in your community, how can we really help people understand that this information is important in order to move processes forward across the county? Um, and so that's what I would just report on right now. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Marshall. Um, such relevant and important information as we go through uh, the finalized strategic plan. Um, we'll definitely be able to see opportunities to put forth um, specific action items that address those key areas that you um, pointed out, um, the understanding of why hate bias is important, the support, um, how to report um, the full gamut. So thank you so much for, for bringing that up. Um, Commissioner Jamil, uh, would you like to go next? Yes, I would. Uh request uh, that I be given at least two minutes to talk about the biases because the one, the main, one of the main missions of our commission is to investigate discrimination in employment and housing, etc. And we have never discussed in detail where do the biases come from. Um, today is a historical day and any time I, as a Muslim, when I face some people, they think that I am the one responsible or so-called my people responsible for 9-11. And I just wanted to present <clears throat> the report that was published by a British newspaper called The Independent. And it was published in October 2001, a month after the 9-11. And he said, the executive there, the editor, that Washington and New York followed the policy of the ostrich and did not want to reveal all the Muslims who died and were killed in this 9-11. So to this day, I have yet to hear a single Muslim's name when they read out about the 2,996 people dying all of them Muslims. There was a gentleman by the name Mr. Dawani. 
he was a vice president of an insurance company and his office was on the 99th floor in South Tower. He helped evacuate and save 80 lives of his colleagues. They all escaped, but was himself trapped, killed, and buried under the rubble. There were two Muslim houses of worship on the top of the towers that were destroyed, and an imam from a Jordanian nationality also perished in that. All Muslim workers in the restaurants and the towers also perished. There were 900 Muslim police officers of the NYPD. They came off, majority of them, of their duty to assist in the mission. There was a gentleman, Dr. Taki, from Detroit. Detroit. He came to New York with a group of what they call Troy firefighters to help in a bucket brigade for search and rescue for two days at Ground Zero. They have never been recognized as the uh, first responders or others. There were six uh, people from Pakistan who died, six Bangladeshis, four from Guyana, two from Sri Lanka, two from Gambia, two from Ivory Coast, one from Yemen, one from Iran, one from Ethiopia, one from Turkey, one from Trinidad and Tobago, one from Burma, one from Albania, one from Greece, one from India, representing more ratio and population of Muslim as it is in the United States who were killed during this. The most famous victim was the only Arab among all 9-11 victims. His name was, he was from Yemen, Abdul Salam, who worked at the Marriott Hotel and World Trade Center. He was very brave and helped people escape the building. And yet his body was never found. The oldest victim was an Iranian woman who was 69 years old. And the youngest were two 25 year olds One's name Ibis from Turkey and a Pakistani named Khalid. Now, the reason I'm mes me mentioning these specific ones is because the biases are institutionalized where by design, Washington and New York, as the newspaper mentioned, they don't want to recognize because a Muslim is a terrorist. A Muslim is an anti-American. A Muslim is an anti-Semitic. Whereas every Yemeni, Lebanese, Syrians, Muslim, they are all Semites. So I wanted to, and I thank you for letting me just say this brief introduction on that, that these things, they need to be spread out so that there are no biases because we have a tremendous increase in the hate and Islamophobia. Of course, some leaders are not helping either because they are trying to demonize certain groups. And I think it is our responsibility as commissioners that we educate our communities, that we are all in the same boat. All of us have the same responsibility to be first responders, to be supporters of each other. 9-11, 10-11, 3-11, whatever it may be, and unless we understand that these biases, some of them are institutionalized and some are individual ignorance of knowledge. And some of it is a unjust and a devious political rhetoric. So I hope that the, this year and the following year, we can keep this in mind to prevent these biases and then we will not have this kind of a chaos. I appreciate you all listening to me. Thank you, um, Commissioner Jamil, for uh, just bringing forth that information. Um, I know I learned a lot just based upon that brief uh, overview. Um, and I, I just personally thank you. And I would imagine that some of the other commissioners just from the head nodding uh, feel the same. Um, I will turn it over to Commissioner Lewis for any remarks. Commissioner Lewis. 
I'm sorry. I thought I was on. I'm on now, right? Yes, we <laughs> um, can hear you. Uh, good evening. Um, um, it's been a long summer, and I'm glad everyone's here to, you know, reconvene. And I appreciate uh, Commissioner um, Jamal's remarks um, because um, he's speaking the truth. And it just doesn't apply to uh, the Muslim minority population. It also applies to the black population. There's so much institutionalized and systemic racism has existed so long that we are participating part of the systems and we don't realize we don't see it. And um, it has to be um, brought to attention. And the same way that he had to actually um, speak and identify these instances um, to bring it to attention um, is what has to happen for a lot of minorities, not, just not the Muslim minority, because there's a lot of call out uh, about different incidents, um, Some, not necessarily in Baltimore County, but nationwide. Um, the recent, um, I think it was Sunday, NFL game um, player was um, treated um, with because of racial um, stereotypical attitude. Um, and this is very common. And he made the comment when they asked him about it. He said, you know, I'm okay. He said, but what if I, what about the guy who's not the NFL player? What would happen to him? And those kind of things, I wish that HRC could do more to confront. I've been to a lot of different meetings um, for, um, District 2 and District 4 for a lot of different organizations. I guess over this past summer, at least 12 um, involving police, believe it or not, the Secret Service, but that's a, that's kind of strange. But uh, um, the also different communities. And I often would like the opportunity to talk more about HRC. But and I've been asking for this for a couple of years, materials, um, some flyers, some brochures, something that when I go to these groups and say, I would like to do a presentation and a couple of, and I've also had opportunities where people have come to me and said, do you have an idea for a presentation? We're looking for whether you talk about seniors, whether you're talking about um, some type of community groups. And I'm like, yes, um, but, I don't have a brochure, I don't have flyers or anything that said, this is what HRC is about. These are the kind of things we are, we want to do. These are the kind of things we stand for. If nothing else, to say our mission, to say this is what we stand for. This is our goal for the county. This is how we would like things to be. Um, it would be very, very helpful. And I could do a lot to speak and stand up and speak to say I'm representing Baltimore County's vision, Baltimore County's um, position when it comes to human relations. One thing that's been happening um, in my community, I live in Pikesville, um, and recently, well, recent, in the past, I guess, maybe five years, um, within a half a mile, um, a Muslim educational center has opened up. And as a result, we're getting a lot of more uh, Muslims in our community. And I was encouraged last year when we started getting families to come to our community picnic. And again, this year it was even more. Um, and we're going to continue to encourage that. In our community, we encourage um, everyone to relate to everyone, to speak with everyone, to be civil to everyone, and to be um, tolerant. And, so that um, spirit of brotherhood that we're all from, we're all from someplace else. Um, so we all become acclimated to what is understood as the, um, the, the, to be a citizen of the United States, not just the rights, but the responsibilities. Um, so um, I'm asking if we can please get some pamphlets some brochures or something so that as I started attending these meetings, I can start fulfilling these requests to come to the meeting and make a presentation um, because I think it's uh, it would help a lot to get the word out and to emphasize a lot of the things that Commissioner Mo has said about uh, being tolerant, brotherhood, and providing some education 
around some of the stereotypes that exist in our community. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Commissioner Lewis. And as a part of the October meeting packet, you and other commissioners will have those materials. Um, just a reminder, um, as far as, you know, you mentioned the mission, um, the vision purpose that has all been a part of our strategic planning efforts, um, which we have since finalized and we will share and provide to you the um, final version of the um, recommendations, the goals that came from from you. Uh, when I say from you, from the commissioners. So uh, more to come momentarily, but yes, ma'am, at the October meeting, which is in person, uh, we do plan to have that as part of the packet. All right, and- um, Thank you. you. You're welcome, thank you. Uh, before we go to Commissioner Bryan, uh, whom do we have on the phone? Commissioner Myrick. How you doing, Commissioner Myrick? So nice to hear your voice. I'm fine, thank you. I had a bit of a problem trying to get you on the computer. It oh. wouldn't accept the password, so I've been on the phone. Okay, okay, wonderful, wonderful. We'll um, circle it back to you in just a moment. Uh, Commissioner Bryan, uh, I know you had your hand up and I was headed to you next anyway. Do you have any remarks to share? Everybody, um, yes, thank you. I'm seconding Commissioner Lewis's request. It would be really good if we could have a hand up with our vision, mission, and value statement on it and maybe contact information that would send people to a website or an email address, something that we could provide to people that we meet in other places. That was it. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Did you have anything to report out um, just community wide or was that your only feedback? Uh, no, I've been. Most of my efforts have, have been um, involved with the Maryland Commission on LGBTQ plus affairs. And we are in the process of building vision and mission statements and uh, developing a strategic plan. And once we have that, I would like to coordinate with the HRC in maybe doing presentations for the community about what we're doing and how our goals intersect and how we can help people. Absolutely. Thank you so much, um, Commissioner Bryan. Um, I do just want to uh, share because I know that you were um, also heavily involved with the Baltimore Coalition of the Maryland Lynching Memorial. Um, and so just wanted to um, just shed light that um, in July, on July 13th to be exact, that we were able to celebrate the anniversary um, well, it's not really a celebration. I I, I do um, retract my choice of words, but the remembrance ceremony um, for for Howard um, Cooper, the Howard Cooper Memorial. He was unfortunately lynched in 1885 at the old jail at the age of 15 years old. Um, what was a um, somewhat celebratory moment was that the county designated space as a truth and reconciliation. Um, park and so um, this year's remembrance was held at the new location. Oh, so that's I just good. Wanted to um, bring that to everyone's attention because that was indeed a monumental moment. There also is a program scheduled for the fall, right at the at the um, museum. Okay. And um, I, the date escapes me right now, but I can share that when I, when I find it. Okay, thank you. That'd be great. Um, and now for our emeritus commissioner, um, Commissioner Myrick, uh, did you have any remarks that you wanted to share with us? What have you been up no. to? <laughs> <laughs> I've been staying busy, involved in the community, and you know I've been involved in the community for many years. But uh, I think it would be very helpful 
if we did have a brochure, you know, stating our mission and who we are. Will do. Thank you all. You're welcome. All right. Um, so now um, we will turn it over to just general report outs from the um, administration from the executive team. I'm going to reshare my screen. Uh, so first we want to spotlight and thank those who were able to attend this year's uh, Maryland Commission on Civil Rights Biennial Civil Rights and Fair Housing Gala. Um, it was um, truly uh, a, a treat, um, truly a remarkable event, so well put together and just was truly a night of reflection and togetherness. Um, this is uh, truly one of those those flagstone um, opportunities to, to, to participate in. And so um, those who were able to participate, thank you. And for those who um, weren't, don't worry, it'll be back around. Um, so you'll have another chance to participate at an upcoming one. Great. There are also some upcoming trainings and events. On September 20th, the uh, Maryland Commission, I'm sorry, the Maryland Association of Human Rights Agencies um, is hosting at Howard County a Civil and Human Rights Conference. Um, the Maryland Civil Rights um, Conference, um, it will be, is a free, it's a free event. So um, if you are available, the, this information will, of course, be shared with you. Um, if you have your phones handy, you can access the QR code now to register. On October 22nd, uh, there is the 60th anniversary celebration um, celebrating um, the, this is for the civil rights. Um, so uh, this does cost a, a nominal fee of $60. Um, this will be held in Lithicum Heights. And so, again, if you have your phones ha handy and are interested, the QR code is also available. Uh, just some additional community events that are coming up. So this Saturday, uh, there is the Welcoming Community Fair that's hosted by the county's Office of Immigrant Affairs. Um, this event is specific uh, for the Hispanic population is providing resources and support, and it will be held at the Randallstown Community Center. Um, next Saturday, September 21st, is the annual African American Cultural Festival. Um, this, uh, for those who may be unfamiliar, but I, I would bet that most people here are familiar, it highlights the achievements of the African American community and provides resources geared to the African-American population. Um, this is a statewide, um, I also understand, I think some people maybe travel down from Pennsylvania uh, to attend. So this is uh, an event not to be missed. It's held here in Towson at the uh, Patriot Plaza. The following um, Thursday is the Community Leadership Summit. Um, so for those who may be unfamiliar, this is uh, hosted by the County Executive's Office of Community Engagement. This event is specifically for community leaders to engage with county agencies and learn about services and activities um, that will enrich social, economic, and health outcomes for residents, businesses, and visitors of Baltimore County. This is also held in Towson, but it will be held at the Sheraton Baltimore North. When is the date again? Uh, Thursday, September 26th. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, we'll make sure we send around the times as well. Thank this, you. This particular event starts at 8, 8 a.m. and ends at 4. I see. Um, on Saturday, September 28th, is a waterfront festival that's hosted by the oh, County's wow. Department of Recreation and Parks. This is specifically focused on the LGBTQIA community and resources, and this is held in um, Rocky Point in Essex. So if you could save these dates, um, we, um, while you, you, while you may not have the brochures to bring to these events, we will. So we are already planning to be present with the table um, and would love to have you um, partner with us 
uh, and to spread the word to make sure that the information and resources reaches the intended audiences. Any questions before we move on? Uh, yes, this is uh, Sheila Lewis. Um, what time is the event on the 14th at uh, Randallstown? Um, Bibios? I think that starts at 8 a.m. as well. Uh, and Sorry, it's over what? at 4. 8 to 4? Yes. Okay, thank you. So you'll have this all this information online? Yes, we'll send this out with updated um, with the time slots. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and one more question about the 14th of that. Mm -hmm. Is this for um, residents or is this for community leaders? Or I mean, what is the intended audience? So the event at Randallstown yeah. is a Hispanic population. So this is so this is targeted to, to residents who are Hispanic, right? Yes. Okay. Um. Oh wow, the fourteen. Um. So you, Commissioner, okay. Commissioner Lewis, the event is not it. That's the targeted audience, but it is open to the entire community. Okay. Um. That's good because um I know I do a lot of community work. And it has really surprised me um, that I do see a lot of um, um, uh, attitudes, um, discriminatory, stereotypical type attitudes um, between um, the black, some black community residents towards Hispanic residents. And um, that's something that it would surprise me, but when I've seen it, I've challenged it. And that's something that um, really needs a lot more attention. Um, people don't realize that it's, I don't think people realize it's there as much as they see some other type of um, stereotypical type reactions become between the minorities. But there is definitely one between the black community and Hispanic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so the strategic plan. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment. So this has been um, a year in the works. And um, I am so pleased at where we have arrived. Um, so we have identified, when I say we, that of course includes all of the commissioners, um, both past and present, uh, the strategic goals for over the next three years. Um, so 2024 through 2026, which coincides with fiscal year 25 through fiscal year 27. Um, so the top, is community outreach and advocacy, followed by creating safer communities, and third, authoritative policy and enforcement. Um, our goal with community outreach and advocacy is to really create bridges between the communities and the government by investing in initiatives that create channels for communication and opportunities for meaningful collaboration. Um, it's important that we have safer communities, and we talked about um, that in so many ways throughout this conversation today. Um, we want to build communities where all individuals are respected, protected, and able to facilitate, fully participate in society without fear of discrimination or violation of the civil and human rights. And then we want to also strengthen the commission's brand as a catalyst for policy reform, change, and enforcement, underscoring the commitment to driving positive societal <laughs> impact in the county. Um, so those are the goals. And then we identified some strategies and key activities associated. Um, for the strategies uh, associated with community outreach and advocacy, we want to develop partnership programs, launch awareness and education campaign, and create community forums. 
Um, we really want to lead the design and development of partnership programs um, between the government agencies and community-based organizations. We want to raise public awareness of local advocacy and human rights organizations. And then we want to create spaces for dialogue and engagement, as an example, town halls, focus groups, seminars. Some of the activities include identifying community-based organizations and advocacy groups to partner with, developing a formal partnership framework that outlines roles, expectations, and objectives, tracking campaign and community forum engagement metrics, such as attendance at events and interactions on social media. Um, we wanna conduct surveys before and after the campaign and forms to measure changes in public awareness and attitudes. And we wanna calculate um, the financial return on investments by comparing the campaign costs to the benefits gain. So um, one of the things that we intend to delve deeper into, and you'll this will be the same theme for each goal um, at our upcoming October meeting um, is, okay, we plan to identify community-based organizations. You all are the uh, heartbeats. You all are the um, closest to the community. Um, so therefore, the organizations, you you know which ones are the, the trusted um, entities that we should engage with. Um, Commissioner Lewis uh, spoke very eloquently um, and passionately about the, receiving invitations to give presentations and attending various events. Uh, so those are examples of which community organizations or opportunities that we could potentially engage to um, provide that education um, to be able to uh, issue surveys because we, we, we also only know what we know objectively. And so issuing those surveys to have to gain a better understanding of what maybe some of those experiences are, but also how well are we doing? Is there more that the community expects to receive from us? So there's lots of work to do, um, truly attainable things within the next three years, but we will, as I mentioned, we'll delve in deeper during the October meeting. And of course, this will be sent out well in advance. Um, this will be sent out actually after today's meeting for you to review and begin to consider uh, how to actualize this particular goal. Goal two, um, we talked about uh, as far as the strategies, sponsoring training and resources. Uh, we talked about training earlier, organizing, um, listening sessions, promoting and supporting cultural events. And so as an example, we just went over the upcoming event schedule. Um, many of those were cultural events. And so having your presence there truly, truly matters. It truly, truly makes an impact. While the administration uh, also has a role to play, it's also important to remember that the commissioners also have a role to play as well. It's not either or, but this is a collective effort. Um, we want to promote activities via community networks, social media, identify accessible and safe locations across the community to host these activities. Uh, we want to utilize trained moderators. So if it's not one of us, if we know of an entity or an individual who has viable information um, or resources, we want to invite them in to, um, uh, to, and we be the facilitators, if you will, of said message. Um, again, tracking attendance and engagement with the trainings, listening sessions and events. Um, again, we talked about pre and post surveys, documenting feedback and conducting public meetings. Regarding the authoritative policy enforcement, we want to amplify the subject matter expertise uh, throughout the commissioner. So establish a brand as a go to source for expert commentary on the status of human relations in the country in the county by publishing research, white papers and policy briefs that address critical issues and proposed solutions. Um, developing an advocacy toolkit, creating resources for advocating for policy changes to promote a uniform and strategic approach to influence and change. And we want to promote transparency, establishing clear mechanisms for reporting, investigating, and addressing discrimination and rights violations. Um, 
some of the key activities, empowering commissioners to um, advocate their work by outlining guidelines and expectations, transition commissioners from close to case, close to, to close um, and active case reviews to increase their influence uh, and identify critical issues, trends, identify community-based organizations, groups, organize workshops, publicize any influence that campaigns or partnerships have had on implementation and then tracking the number of discrimination rights. And so some of these key activities, not even just for um, goal three, but also goals two and two and one, we're already doing. We're just actualizing it. We're putting words on paper. We're, we're getting credit, if you will, for many of the efforts that are already underway. Um, some of the, the new activities, um, as an example, for this particular goal will be the closed case review process, which we have um, been in discussion on um, with you all. And um, we will send um, in the next couple of weeks, um, well in advance of the October meeting, what the business process is for the closed case. Um, what we intend to do, just to add a little more context, is to provide, uh, well, one, we need to establish a subcommittee um, to review the closed cases. Um, the closed cases will be reviewed on a quarterly basis. And so therefore each quarter will be new members of the subcommittee to make sure that each commissioner has an opportunity um, throughout their t um, term to have reviewed and participated uh, in the closed case review portion. Um, after the committee has had an opportunity to review and make recommendations, that presentation will be made to uh, or provided to whomever is serving as chair. And then the general commission will also have an opportunity to receive um, information on what those recommendations were, the overview of the closed cases that were reviewed and provide any um, general feedback uh, so that we can actualize whatever action items are, are birthed from them. Um, this is something that is new. Uh, it's not our hope to only um, provide you all closed cases to review um, forever, which is why bullet two talks about trans transitioning from closed to active cases. Um, so we, as we continue to uh, familiarize ourselves, because this is also will be a new process for the administration. So as we continue to roll this out, as we continue to mature together and have lessons learned, we will be prepared to include the commissioners on the active case portion. So just wanted to provide clarity on uh, that bullet and to also give a prelude of what we are about to embark as it comes, as it relates to uh, the closed cases. Um, as you all, once you all receive this and have time to review and digest, uh, we encourage you to consider the, the following. Um, one is the timeline. What things are achievable now? Um, I talked about some of the things that we are already doing now. Um, what are some things that we probably have a year or two out? Um, we want to be realistic because if we're realistic, then we can indeed plan for true success. Uh, succession planning. Um, these commissions, the commission seats are term limited. Uh, so we want to make certain that we are considering succession planning. Um, and continuity of the key activities. Uh, and we want to quantify our impact. We want to be able to demonstrate uh, the, the hard work that, that we currently are doing and that we truly are getting ready to, um, uh, uh, to, to go submerge, so we're ready to go, go even deeper in. Uh, so we want to be able to quantify the strategies, we want to be able to quantify the key activities so that they're measurable, attainable, and realistic. So I won't really go into this. This was just a, as an example. Uh, this is not anything that's set in stone, uh, but this was just an example of how we can track the goal connected to the strategy and incorporating the, t the, the timeline and various milestones. And this also is just an example guide um, of the 
various partners and stakeholders who we want to consider as we embark on fulfilling each activity. So whether it's just solely the commission versus, uh, you know, having the executive staff be accountable. Um, the, uh, it says DEI chief, but it also means the executive director. Uh, some of this is definitely going to require engagement and input from the Office of Law, and then also uh, definitely, depending upon what the initiative is, uh, we we are going to want and need to flag and su have the support from the county administration and the county council, uh, because as we know, um, there's also representation from the county council on the commission. So I know this was a lot to digest, um, but this is the fruit of the, the, the labor that we have spent on developing this. Um, the fact that we do have words on paper, that we do have a plan um, jotted out um, does signal that we are on the right path. Um, now we just need to dissect at the next level, which is putting everything um, making everything um, uh, actualized. So um, I know again, you know, this was a lot to digest, so I don't expect a whole lot of immediate questions, but if there are any immediate questions, I will answer them now. This is Commissioner Shiva Lewis. So you're going to send this plan to us, correct? Yes, you're going to receive it right after this meeting. Okay, so we should submit um, any comments or um, that we have. Is there a date when you want this in if we're going to discuss it at the October meeting? Yes, so that will be included in the message. Okay, because um, listening to what you were saying and looking at what I saw listed there, um, th th there are things that um, that I've been concerned about for some time. Um, and something that um, I believe uh, Danielle Marshall, I'm not sure I got to look at the names, like the participants' names. When she talked about it, she attended a meeting, Dan yeah, Danielle Marshall, and um, about the bias report. And I remember I used to do the code meetings in Howard County, and it always surprised me that. And even the report that we received in, in the meetings from the police department, how few reports there are. And from what I'm seeing and hearing in the community, and I'm like, you know, are, are people not reporting it because they don't know what it is? They don't know that they have been discriminated against. And I think part of it is that they don't realize it because it's just so um, covert and, and they don't realize it. And, and I think that educational a uh, part of getting the word out, um, letting people know this is what it is, this is what it looks like, and this is how you report it is extremely important. It's a similar to the campaign they did about domestic violence. Um, until they started telling people what it was, what it looked like, people just lived with it for years. And I think it's a sim similar thing when we're talking about um, fair and equitable treatment. They've lived with it so long and they've accepted it and they don't realize. And I think it's really important for us as human relations commissioners to start letting people know what it is, what it looks like, and what you can do if you're experiencing it. You are correct, Commissioner Lewis. Uh, that is what I have experienced in my last years of uh, serving the community, that they feel intimidated and that's the reason they don't report. They're afraid of any retaliation. They don't report. Of course, the first thing is they need to know who to report to, when and how. But the reasons behind many not reporting is what I just mentioned. And I have had a hard time in trying to convince them that there is no such thing as retaliation because that also will become another crime and therefore they should not be afraid. And most of them, I've tried to give them my personal contact. I said, if you feel that, is a personal contact. I'll help them forward it to the commission. So that's the only thing I found, unless somebody has other suggestion, how to overcome that hesitancy or that fear or that doubt. 
Let me add in one other thing that I um I came across and um I appreciate both uh, Commissioner Lewis and, and Jamil your your thoughts on this. Um, something that really stood out starkly to me when I was at that forum was we were looking at data from across the, the state of Maryland. Uh, and there were a number of counties that either underreported hate bias or did not report at all, meaning there weren't a single, like there wasn't a single case of hate bias reported throughout an entire year or multiple years. Um, and it's really interesting because we live in a day and age where facts are often disputed by people uh, and data can be skewed in whatever way you want. Um, and I think some of the stories that are being spun by sometimes officials, sometimes residents are that, you know, this is a great place to live. Look, we don't have the same problem that maybe, you know, a Baltimore County, a Baltimore city has, et cetera. But the reality is that the problems still exist. Uh, and one, you know, they're not recording the data, which is problematic in its own respect. But the other thing is sometimes we become socialized into harmful ways of living and being to the point where you don't even think it's worth reporting because that's just how it is around here. And so I think that there is an educational component, but there's also an accountability component that we have to hold our leaders to in order to make sure that they're actually taking data and they're not pushing it to the side, but that it actually is filed as an actual hate bias incident and rolled up to the state level so that we can do something about it. So the county and the state level, um, because what I don't want for people is to just get to the point where they're becoming numb to the fact that they are uh, both oppressed, that they are have hate bias that's aimed at them on a regular basis. And they're like, oh, that, you know, that's just Jim. That's just how Jim thinks about things. And that's how he behaves. That's not acceptable. Um, and so that's one element of it. And I certainly do. Um, I understand, Commissioner Jamil, your point around um, any retaliation is also a crime in that. But perceived safety is real. And so we have to be able to acknowledge that as well, because even if it is a crime, crimes happen every day. It does not mean that someone feels safer knowing that what has happened to them is a crime and that hopefully it's being investigated. So those are just some takeaways that I walked away with also. And I think, you know, it's going to be educational. It's going to be accountability. Um, and it is going to be dealing with the, the perceived um, impact that it'll have on people's lives. Thank you all. This that this is such helpful feedback, and um, I, I, I'm truly confident that there are some some really great things that we can do uh, together uh, with the administration's support. Um, I won't go into them, but I'm just jotting down some notes. So thank you for that. Um, okay. The other uh, labor of love that we have been working on um, includes the service commitment statement, um, the pledge. And so you all have seen this. You've seen multiple iterations. We've received your feedback uh, and it has since been finalized. Um, so you will uh, again, you'll receive this right after today's meeting um, for review and signature. Um, you can send your signature, your, your copy back. Uh, electronically, or you can plan to bring it to the October meeting. So whatever is most convenient for you, we will also have copies available at the October meeting um, for those who um, are maybe unable to excessively uh, sign or print it out um, remotely. Uh, I, um, this is Sheila Lewis. I have a question about the October meeting. Is okay. it a little bit um, similar to the last in-person meeting we had? Where after we had the meeting, then it was the online meeting. This is a commission meeting in October. It's not a strategic planning meeting. Okay, so it's going to be similar where similar to what we're doing now, except it's in person. Okay, so we're not going to have the remember with the last one we in person, I think you know, the last hour we had it and it was like online. You know what I'm talking about? Because then we yeah. only had so commissioner lewis i know what you're talking about yes ma'am so there will be an online option for the community but the expectation from the executive director as well as the county executive is for all of us to be in person on that day right so right so so, 
So at, so that so part of it we will be on online. Right, but this meeting will be in person for the commissioners. Right. Because one of the things I remember when I looked around the room at that time, because you know, it was at the end and some people had left, that it was only black women in the room at the time. And we made the comment like, you know, because I think some of the men had to leave and you know, some of the other things do to to so when people looked at it online, they didn't just they just see the diversity of the commissioners that you know it just wasn't one uh, homogeneous type group. I remember Commissioner um, Blount taking uh, taking over for Commissioner Blavitt, mm -hmm. and also um, Commissioner Jamil was there. So it may have looked like that just from the angle of the camera, but I think it, the room itself was diverse. So what we'll do is we'll try and figure out how to make the angle of the camera a little different. But I believe that um, outside of Commissioner Blavitt, I think the rest of the commissioners were there. Okay, we'll talk. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, in addition to the service commitment pledge, uh, we have the role of a commissioner. Again, you've seen this multiple iterations. This is the final version. We've incorporated your um, feedback. Um, and also know that we have also consulted the Office of Law um, for their um, feedback on legal sufficiency. Um, the com youth commissioner role, which we do continue to uh, seek any youth who are interested, um, is very much similar to that of the commissioner's role. Um, and then the bylaws, um, as we were going through updating uh, or, or um, introducing and updating the service commitment and the commissioner roles, um, we felt it important to also review and update the bylaws. So the, these two have been, um, uh, this too has also been um, updated and finalized. So all of these documents in which uh, being presented to you will be shared with you um, post meeting. And uh, as I mentioned before, um, the, the documents that require your signature and or feedback um, we will set uh, with it with the methodology and providing such feedback and or signature uh, in the timeline. Very good. All right. Uh, so I have just one other note to share. Um, actually, that's not true. I do apologize. Um, I have two. Uh, updates to share. The first is uh, the reminder that you see before you. Our next meeting, as we just finished discussing, is in person. Uh, it's October 9th, and it will be held in the historic courthouse room 400. I'm sorry, room 118. Um, the address is here. Um, you, most of you all have attended commission meetings in this room before, uh, and so we are keeping up with that theme. Um, the other, uh, speaking of diversity of the uh, commission, um, we are in the process of interviewing um, several candidates uh, for to make certain that the, the commission is indeed uh, full by the end of the year. Um, our hope is to have the commissioners uh, onboarded uh, by the October 9th meeting, um, but the, the firm deadline is by December, uh, well before December 31st, um, but just wanted to provide that update because I know that I mentioned at the start of this meeting that we don't technically have a quorum, but we uh, have a, a very healthy um, list of uh, candidates that we do believe that should all go well as a part of the screening and interview process that we will be able to introduce and have them join us, uh, especially at a point in measure, uh, point in time. Um, as we prepare to embark on our very strategic goal activities and our strategies. All right, so um, with that, uh, I will open it up for final comment and uh, closing. Well, my final comment was, uh... Thanks to Ms. Peoples and uh, uh, Ms. Elliott. 
and Miss Ramona, you guys are working hard and I really, really appreciate it. Staying on top of all of these events and all and keeping us informed. And thank you. And I hope that uh, we can all collaborate well enough to make best use of these opportunities to do what we are supposed to do. And I thank you all again. Thank you. And I second um, Jamal's um, comments. Um, it's really encouraging to see a uh, concrete plan um, that's a pathway to achieve some specific um, objectives. I like that they're objectives, not just goals, but they're objectives that are attached to those goals so that we are in a position to start um, having some measurable accountability so people can look and uh, creating a new history a more um, dynamic and strategic history for the Human Relations Commission. I think it's very encouraging. I thank you and appreciate the work that you guys have done. Thank you. I, I agree with both the commissioners and I just want to make a note that the work that's being done here really closely parallels what's going on at the Commission on LGBTQ plus affairs. And I hope that in the future, we can work together on things that are mutually pertinent to, to our missions. Thank you. Last but not least, I want to make sure that we welcome Commissioner Chris Thornton and wish her good luck in joining us in pursuing the goals that we have already enumerated. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you have a very safe and wonderful evening. Um, and be on the lookout for the email post meeting. And we look forward to seeing everyone in October. God willing. Happy fall. Thank you. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you all.